Greetings to all my dear brothers and sisters with the peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the blessings of our great God be spread on all of us. It is my wish and prayer. Amen. Our sacred mission. When our Lord Jesus was here on earth, a bit before he rose up to heaven, he gave to his disciples a sacred mission. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 16. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Ye that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The disciples heard the mission very well. Go to all the world, to all inhabited part of the world, to preach the gospel of Christ. Maybe they started to worry about how they would complete the mission. It wasn't an easy task. In fact, it was a mission humanly impossible. They didn't have the easy ways we have today, like the means of transportation, like the means of communication. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the holy angels, in their time, the gospel has been brought to the entire world. The four corners of this inhabited planet heard about Jesus Christ, the eternal gospel. The same mission they received is extended till our days. Not only to the church, but as well to each and every one of us. Let's read together the experience of Philip with the Inuk in Acts chapter 8. We are going to read from verse 26. There we can find an amazing experience. We can see how the Lord used one of his servants, the work of the holy angels, and how the Holy Spirit was working. The Holy Spirit began to work in the Ethiopian. The angel was sent to talk to Philip, and Philip didn't resist. He rose and he went to talk to the Ethiopian. Let's read Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go to round the south into the way that goeth down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Surely Philip was praying early in the morning, worrying about his responsibility with his mission. And now to whom may I speak about Jesus? Lord, please lead me to someone who is interesting. And at this exact moment, an angel entered the house of Philip and he spake face to face with Philip saying, Arise and go to the way that go from Jerusalem to Gaza. There you'll be told what to do. And in the verses 29 to 31, we see the result. When finally Philip met the chariot of the Inuk, the Spirit tells him, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what you readest? And he said, The Inuk, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Dear brothers and sisters, the Inuk, the Ethiopian, was the prime minister or the minister of economy of a kingdom, the Ethiopian kingdom. 
He was an educated person. He was an account, an economist. He could speak several languages. He would be today a professional graduated from an university. But when he was reading the book of Isaiah, he could read it because he knew the Hebrew and the Aramaic languages perfectly. But the meaning is what he didn't understand. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship the God of the Jewish, and it had been impossible. But by the divine providence, he took a book with him, the book of Isaiah the prophet. Look at how the Holy Spirit working in the heart, in the mind of the Ethiopian, the angel visiting Philip and Philip following the indications of the angel. He arrived till the Ethiopian and he asked him, Do you understand what you are reading? And the Ethiopian answered, How could I understand if nobody explained it to me? Then Philip sat in the chariot with the Ethiopian and he began to explain to him everything the prophet Isaiah was saying about Jesus. Further, after a long study, after hours of study, the Ethiopian has been deeply impressed and said to Philip, in spite of being Ethiopian, in spite of being Inuk, is it possible to me to get baptized? And Philip answered, If you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, of course you can. And at that moment, the Ethiopian said, Yes, I believe. I accept Jesus as my Savior. Then both of them went down to the water, and the Ethiopian got baptized. And when they left, the Spirit of the Lord cut away Philip for a new mission, for the next mission. And the Inuk went back to his home, happy and joyful for having met Jesus, and he turned into a missionary, a messenger that brought the message of the gospel to his country, to his nation, and to all of those he could talk to about his amazing conversion and this wonderful encounter. He had with the Lord. Dear brothers, dear sisters, dear young people, we all have a mission, a special mission in which heaven is interested in helping us. The angels could do easily this job, but they are not allowed to. The Lord has a plan and he executed with order. The Holy Spirit impressed, the angels cooperate, and the predication agents, we are, you and I. Let's look at what says the spirit of prophecy. There are many who are reading the scriptures who cannot understand their true import. All over the world, men and women are looking wistfully to heaven. Prayers and tears and inquiries go up from souls longing for light, for grace, for the Holy Spirit. Many are on the verge of the kingdom, waiting only to be gathered in. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, there are people in this world that are praying, crying, because they don't understand the Word of God. They wish for light, and they beg heaven to give them the grace to know more about His Word. Many read and do not understand the true meaning. They need that someone like Philip go nearer these souls to explain to them the Word of God. Acts of the Apostle, page 109. An angel guided Philip to the one who was seeking for light and who was ready to receive the gospel. Pay attention. And today, 
angels will guide the footsteps of those workers who will allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify their tongues and refine and ennoble their hearts. Dear brothers, this is amazing. The angels are ready to guide us to these souls that are seeking for light if we place ourselves at the disposition of God. This is amazing. Let's read one more text. Acts of the Apostle, page 109. The angel sent to Philip could himself have done the work for the Ethiopian, but this is not God's way of working. It is his plan that men are to work for their fellow men. This is amazing, dear brothers and sisters, because in his plan, the Lord established that we who have been reached by his grace he established that we be channels of light and blessings to our fellow men because working on the behalf of others, working on the salvation of others, we will be working on our own salvation. In the book of Step to Christ, to the page 79 it is written but in his infinite love he chose to make us co-workers with himself with Christ and the angels that we might share the blessing the joy the spiritual uplifting which result from this unselfish ministry Dear brothers and sisters, it is a privilege to be part of this mission. It is a privilege to be collaborators of Christ, of the angels and of the Holy Spirit in the salvation of our fellow men. It is a great privilege. It brings joy, gladness, motivation, pleasure, and it brings enthusiasm happiness to see souls that are uniting to the feet of Jesus, souls that are taken from clothes of Satan and that are put now to the feet of Jesus. This is amazing. Let's read some text of the Spirit of Prophecy. The Desire of Ages, page 195, says, Every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. If you are born in the kingdom of God, then you are a missionary. You have to accomplish with this function. Christ commits to his followers an individual work, a work that cannot be done by proxy. To save souls should be the life work of everyone who profess Christ. The next text says, individual responsibility, individual effort, Personal sacrifice is the requirement of the gospel. Personal interest and vigilant individual effort will accomplish more for the cause of Christ than can be wrought by sermons or creeds. Dear brothers, did you notice this interesting thing? It's necessary for each of us to realize efforts. Often we will be led to make sacrifices, but what called my attention is that this personal interest and this personal dedication can and will realize much more than a thousands of sermons 
for the cause of Christ. This is amazing, but maybe we are focused too much only on preparing and preaching sermons. And maybe this is the reason why the Lord hadn't come, because the work is going too slow. We need all of us to take a part in this work and to realize personal efforts and sacrifices. The Lord desires His people to arise and do their appointed work. The responsibility of warning the world rests not upon the ministry alone. The lay members of the church are to share in the work of soul saving. Did you hear that, dear brothers? If just a few missionary workers and the pastors dedicate themselves to preach the gospel, the mission will be hardly completed. This work has to be done by all of us. When we will organize ourselves this way, then we will can hurry the coming, bringing the gospel to all the world. The text continues saying, let companies be organized to search for souls by means of missionary visits and by a wise distribution of literature. Dear brothers and sisters, in your church, are there still flyers? Are there still periodicals? Are there books that can be given, offered, or maybe that can be sold to a very low price to make it easy to people to purchase it? Literature, wisely distributed, reach many people. Let's go back to the text. By means of missionary visits and by a wise distribution of our literature, many who have never been wanted may be reached. Let the church members visit their neighbors and open to them the scriptures. By wise planning, the truth may be preached in all districts. Dear brothers and sisters, Bible studies are one of the best ways to preach the gospel to the world. We need to experiment again this experience of contacting friends, neighbors, people we know, and to study together the word of God. We can do little group or with just two or three persons of a family. We have to pound us into preach to them the word of the Lord. We need to conquer their heart to have a Christian friendship with them and to open to them easily the word of God, so they may understand. This way, many souls will meet Jesus and they will surrender to Him. We are living in a time that with no doubt we understand is the time of the end. And there is an event that God promised will happen before the time of grace be over. He promised the latter rain, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And about this, we have to pray, to claim, to beg, 
that the Lord sent the promised power to shine the earth with all his glory. But there is a text that makes me worry, and I'd like to check it with you. It says, The great outpouring of the Spirit of God, which lightens the whole earth with His glory, will not come until we have an enlightened people that know by experience what it means to be laborers together with God. Dear brothers, this has to make us where we are little, because this promised power, the let rain, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will come only when the church will experiment what it is to be laborers together with God. And the text continues saying, when we have entire wholehearted consecration to the service of Christ, God will recognize the fact by an outpouring of His Spirit without measure. But this will not be while the largest portion of the church are not laborers together with God. How impressive! This means, dear brothers, that when the majority of the members of the church will understand by experience what it is to be laborers together with God, working together with God, then the Lord will recognize it by an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But if there isn't even half of the members of the church, the Holy Spirit will not be given. We need that the majority of the church be compromised in this mission of preaching the gospel to the world. And this way, the Lord will recognize His church spreading the letter of rain, the promised power, the Holy Spirit, in its plenitude. I'd like to share a special message to the missionary workers, the pastors, and the leaders. Listen carefully to the text of Testimony to Georges, Volume 3, page 64. A great work is to be done in the world, and what effort are we making for its accomplishment? The people have had too much sermonizing, but have they been taught how to labor for whom Christ died? Has a line of labor been devised and placed before them in such a way that each has seen the necessity of taking part in the work? Dear brothers, this message is solemn because maybe we've preached, maybe we've done thousands of sermons, but maybe we've neglected a special work to teach and to motivate our members to work in favor of those for whom Christ died. We need to organize us. We need to plan wisely this work with our brothers. We want to provide the necessary and effective tools that so they work. It's not just about saying, yes, go to work. No, let's go to work. We have this method and this other way. We have these flyers, these books. We can do this way, this other way. Let's organize us. This is the main responsibility of our leaders. We can't alone accomplish the mission. We Together with all our members, we have to go together with them to accomplish this amazing mission 
of preaching the gospel to all the world. God waited for the spirit of serving to take possession of the world church so that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. The Lord do not ask us something we don't know or we can't do. He just calls us and he trains us and he tells us to use what we have, what we know, what we have in our hands, what we can reach. He doesn't ask us to do impossible things or too hard. He just asks us to go with humility, trusting in the capacity and the power of God. Look carefully to what says the text. Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession. So the Lord is waiting for the church, react for the church to participate of this work. He's waiting half of the members plus one be dedicated to this mission to give them the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers, we have to rekindle this mission to play in our churches to organize us better. So this work do not be just an occasional work, but a programmatic work and systematic to reach our neighbors, our friends, or maybe another quarter, or maybe another city. So this way we take the gospel to all the world. The text continues saying, when the members of the Church of God do their appointed work, in the needy fields at home and abroad, in fulfillment of the Gospel Commission, the whole world will soon be wanted, and the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with power and great glory. Dear brothers, the preaching of the Gospel will conclude with great power, with great glory. All the parts of the inhabited planet will know about the birth of the Lord. They will listen the eternal gospel. There will be not even one person that will can say, I didn't heard. Dear brothers, and sisters, dear young people, do you want to unite to this army of God for the preaching of the gospel? Dear children, dear brothers and sisters, are you ready to make sacrifices? Are you ready to give everything to preach this gospel to the world? The Lord says, Whom will I send? Are you ready to say like Isaiah? Lord, here I am, send me. The Lord is ready to send His Holy Spirit. He is ready to send His holy angels to touch the heart and to impress the minds and he is waiting for you to unite to this invincible celestial army to impress the mind and the heart of everybody so that every person take a decision and so that all of those who want may accept Jesus as their Savior. Matthew 24, 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness into all nations, and then shall the end come. How much more time do you want us to live in this world? 
Don't you think it would be amazing to be with Jesus in the eternal mansions? Too much time waiting. Jesus has delayed too much his coming, waiting for us to do the work. But it will be marvelous that when we will meet Jesus, our Savior, and that we will meet many souls that will have been rich through our work and that will have been brought to the feet of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, let's unite in this mission. Let's cooperate with the salvation of the souls. And the Lord will not only reward us, not only with a crown, but with a crown full of stars. May the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of us. It is my wish and prayer. Amen.